Thanks for staying connected, La Casa family. As always, I'm Connor Shreddy, and I just gotta say, you're looking great today. Did you get a haircut? Bet you thought I wouldn't notice. If you're looking to also upgrade your wardrobe, I wanna let you know that if you're watching this on Sunday, we're gonna be selling our La Casa de Cristo 50 year anniversary t-shirts outside all of our worship areas. They're super comfortable, and they have an awesome design on the front and back of the shirts. Nancy not included. T-shirts are $20, but there's 50 years of ministry sewn into every stitch. As well as our T-shirts, we're gonna be selling our booklets that feature our beautiful stained glass windows in our sanctuary, and they also explain the significance behind each window. How cool is that? But it's time to lock in. It's August, so you know what that means. It's time for our annual mac and cheese drive. Go to the store, pick up boxes of mac and cheese, bring them with you to worship, drop them off in our front office throughout the week, and let's see how many boxes we can get to donate to the Paradise Valley Food Bank. Each year we shatter the previous year's record. I know we can do it again this year. And each time we do that, our pastors always plan something special. I don't even know what it is yet, but let's find out together. And more importantly, this helps serve a community at large. So let's do it, Mac and Cheese Drive 2024. Now let's see what else we got going on across our ministries. Hey La Casa parents, across all of our amazing ministries for your kids and youth, we are so excited to be rolling out a brand new all-in-one registration form for your kids all the way to age 18 years old. This form is for all of our Sunday morning and midweek sessions for both kids and youth from your littlest ones in the nursery all the way through your four-year-olds to fifth graders in here with me. We will sing songs and learn all about the Bible together. And if you have a child in that age range who's interested in joining our children's choir, there's a section on the form for that too. Making music is a lot of fun, as you know, and being in our children's choir is a great way to enable your child to participate in our worship services. So register today and let's get singing. And don't forget about us. We have a whole bunch of fun stuff during the week, like confirmation classes and other events for La Casa Middle Schoolers. And ditto La Casa High School. We would love to see you at any and all of our events. And don't forget, this next weekend in Fellowship Hall at 915, we have our all-youth open house. Don't miss it. Be on the lookout for a QR code and registration links for this all-new, all-in-one registration form. Now, let's worship!
We welcome you to La Casa de Cristo this morning, whether you're joining us here in the sanctuary or on one of our streaming services, we welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin, reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We lose our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for us all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us. That we may live and serve you. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live here in hope now, for hope does not disappoint. And God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
thousands of years ago, disputes arose over the nature of Jesus and what his life, death, and resurrection meant. So the church met at Council in Nicaea to formulate the Nicene Creed. This is not just a Lutheran creed. It is the creed of the apostolic Christian church. Please join me as we share in it together with the words on the screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped in glory. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. At this time, I would love to invite any kids that are here. If you brought your backpack, go ahead and bring it up for our children's message. And I'm gonna have you guys all sit right over here, which I know is a little different than normal. Come on up, if you brought your backpack, bring it. If not, it's okay, no worries. And if you guys will sit down right here, and I want you to be able to look at the table. Look at the table, can you turn this way, buddy? Come on over. Come on, Come on gather over. right over here. Wow. Big crowd. Come on over here so you can see the table. Come on all the way over. I love it. You see some cool backpacks here. Hey, guys, what, what's, what are you doing over here? Well, I'm building a dinosaur. It's going to be awesome, but it's super hard right now. And I'm working on a rainbow. Me too. Hmm. I'm working on building Bluey. It's my favorite show, but it's going to take a lot of Legos. Oh. Well, I'm not building anything yet because I'm not sure what to build. There's so many Legos. You know what, Nancy, you're right. There's so many Legos, and I don't know that we have enough time during children's time to get something built. What do you think? Oh, oh wait, wait a minute. Is that Susan? Is that our friend Susan? It is Susan oh, over there. Hey, it is hey, Susan. Susan, what are you doing over here? I'm making something really hard with a lot of pieces, and it's going to take me days. Oh, my gosh. It, it does look like a lot. Are you making something special? Because let me tell you, we have a table of builders over here, Susan, and you have gotta come on over and we can help you build your creation. Well, I don't really know anyone over there. Oh, <gasps> you don't know someone? Well, guess what? This is a whole table of friends and you can make some new friends. Come yeah, on come over. Yeah, come on, I'll introduce we'll you. Come you. on, we'll help you. Yes. Come you on know, over, right here Susan. We have Brian and we have, you know Nancy. We have Kristen, we have Kate, and, and we have Heather here. Come on over. Come on over. Susan, what Susan. are you wanting to build? Well, I'm making a special statue for the church. It's a statue of Jesus. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, that sounds really cool. What a cool idea. I would love to help. How about you guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's help. Let's, let's help. help. Come on. Okay, I think, I think yeah. we're going to need this piece. Yeah, and yeah. And and we don't, we go super oh, quick. But wait, here we go. Wait, here we go. Oh. That'll work. Wow. 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 <laughs> Did you see that? Can you guys see? Do you see what just happened? Because when we invited everyone, 
everyone to work together, we could create something wonderful. And that's exactly what God wants us to do with one another, is to help one another, to encourage one another, and to show everyone God's love, especially when we start school. Making new friends and encouraging. We have a brand new year to do that. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. You're right, Miss Paula. So at this time, I'm going to have everybody stand up and I'm going to invite anybody else in the congregation that is a student, a teacher, an administrator. If you help teach here at La Casa, I would love to have you come up and join us. Come on up. I'm going to have you guys turn around and look right up here at us. I, while everybody's coming up, I want to introduce you to our ministry team. The people you see up here are representing all the way from our nursery with Tin and Kate to our preschool director, Heather, myself. I do the kids four-year-old to fifth grade. Susan does our middle school. Ryan does our high school. Paula does our women and Nancy does our adult ed. And we are your ministry team and we are here for you. Um, we are so excited for a brand new school year this year, for a new ministry year, and we cannot wait to serve you and help grow with you. So as we talked about today in our children's message, we work together to build something. And what did we use? Legos. So here in a minute, I, we are going to give each one of you a Lego keychain to put on your backpack or your bag or maybe your keys if you're an adult. And on the back of it, it has a Bible verse from 1 Thessalonians 5.11. And it says, encourage one another and build each other up. And that's what we want you to do in your school, in your workplace. We want you to build each other up and help build everybody in the relationship with God. So at this time, what we're going to do as a congregation is we're going to pray over the students, teachers, and administrators. So how you can help is by extending your arm and bowing your head with me as we pray for those going back to school. God, we thank you for an opportunity to step into a new season where we're going to meet new friends, we're going to learn new things, and we're going to have challenges that we're not yet ready to face, but we trust you. As we step into this season, may you go before us and may we look to you for everything that we need. We love you, God. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As you guys go back to your seats, you will get a special keychain. And the congregation at this time, if you would like to stand up and share the peace. At this time, at this time, we'll invite you all to take a seat. 
Our reading today is from the Old Testament, so we'll invite you to be seated for our reading from Scripture. Found on page 659 in the Pew Bible, here's a reading from Micah, chapter 6, beginning with the first verse. Listen to what the Lord says. Stand up, plead your case before the mountains. Let the hills hear what you have to say. Hear, O mountains, the Lord's accusation. Listen, you everlasting foundation of the earth. For the Lord has a case against his people. He is lodging a charge against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people remember what Balak, king of Moab, counseled, and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgah, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with the thousands of rams or with 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to talk humbly, and to, I'm sorry, to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. Before we get into the word this morning, we want to take the opportunity to thank both our family ministry for the children's message today and also our musicians, Ken, Pat, Greg, and Dr. Peterman for leading us in worship. Uh, let's recognize those folks as well. Thanks. Grace and peace to you from God, who is our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
We wake up every morning and we answer some very routine questions in our life. What are we going to have for breakfast? What does our day look like? Do we need to get gas in the car? Are we going to work or to school or to a volunteer activity? Are we taking care of family and friends? And we answer all of those routine questions usually without too much thought because they are everyday questions. But every once in a while a question comes along that is so profound and that is so deep that we need to take a moment to think about it. In the era before the internet and before Hotels.com, Bookings.com, and Airbnbs, the English author J.K. Chesterton would call a series of hotels to book his summer vacation. And he never called the hotels on the basis of their views or what the hotel itself was like, but he always asked to speak to the manager of the hotel. And he would ask one question of the manager. What is the most important thing to you in your life? What is the most important thing to you in your life? And based on how that manager answered the question, if he or she brushed him off, or if they kind of had an answer he didn't like, but if they answered maybe, well, the most important thing to me is my faith, my family, being a servant leader, making sure my customers are taken care of, then he would book or not book the hotel based on the question that he asked the manager. There's a question that is asked of you and me by the prophet Micah in today's lesson. And I'm going to tell you right now, this isn't a feel-good sermon because he challenges you and he challenges me with the question that is asked. But before we get into that question, we have to be clear about what the setting was in Micah's day and how that applies to us thousands of years later. And we don't want there to be any misunderstandings. We don't want there to be any misunderstandings as well. You know, the Olympics are going on in Paris, France, and uh, uh, there was once a group of 10 Lutheran pastors, all men, who were on a tour of Europe, and they went to a French Protestant service on Sunday morning, but the pastor and the congregation didn't speak English, and they didn't speak French very well, so they met with the pastor outside, and they, they managed to grab a passerby on the street to translate for him. And so the French pastor told them that at some point in the service, he was going to introduce them as visiting pastors from America. And when he looked over at them and spoke in French, that they were to stand as visitors on that Sunday, these 10 Lutheran pastors. So the service started. It came time for the announcements. And, and he looked over at the pastors and he said something in French. And they thought that he was saying, please stand as visitors. And they stood up and the French pastor was laughing so hard he had to go sit down in his chair. And the congregation laughed for about two Two minutes because he was not introducing them as visitors, but he had said that they were having a baptism that day, and would the father of the baby please stand at that time, <laughs> when all ten pastors stood up at once. <laughs> Misunderstandings happen. So I hope you appreciate that Sunday after Sunday here we come to a beautiful sanctuary, and we have this beautiful altar. And the sanctuary is clean and sanitized and taken care of due to our wonderful custodial staff. But that wasn't what it was like in the temple in Jerusalem at all. In the temple in Jerusalem, it was more like a cross between a bloody butcher shop and a barbecue. There, smoke billowing from behind the temple, and there, people bringing their offerings of lambs and calves, bringing their offerings of animals and cereal and grain offerings and rivers of oil that they would come to appease a wrathful God. And in this bloody butcher shop of a worship area, this was the setting in which Micah's answering the question of a religious Jew. What does God want of us? What does God require of us? And in that setting, through the prophet, God answers the question, don't you remember? I led you out of Egypt through the leadership of Moses and Aaron and Miriam. I led you through the wilderness against the Moabite king, Balak. 
and I brought you to the promised land. Don't you remember all that? And in a direct reference to Hosea chapter 6 verse 12, he says, hasn't God already told you this, what he wants of you? To do justice, to love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God. Now at this point, as I was preparing the message, I could have created a whole list of ways in which we can do that, both through this church and in the community. But you see, it's not my job here this morning to tell you how you should live your lives by doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with God. Because for each and every one of us, that may be different. It may be feeding the hungry and homeless. It may be sticking up for someone at school who's being bullied. It may mean reaching out to someone at work who is having a problem or to a neighbor or family member who's struggling. It is different for each one of us. It's not my job to do that, but it is my job to raise the important question to you, what does God want of you? What does God want of you? And when we ask that important question, then we also have to answer it. And we have to discern for ourselves what that means. And as the old saying goes, the job of the pastor is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. And this scripture, I don't know about you, but it afflicts me because I want to be comfortable too. What does God want of us? Rather than giving you a laundry list, I'm going to share two brief stories with you of two people that I knew in my life, one not so well, the other pretty well. And I'm going to share with you their life story and how their funerals ended up being in their life. And keep that question in mind, what does God want of you when I share these brief stories? The first was a man named Chet. I met him in a previous church that I was serving. He got an early patent on cell phone towers and technology and mobile data packets through cell phone towers. Chet was probably a multimillionaire, if not a billionaire, but he was not a happy man. His wife got drunk every day, downing a couple fifths. Three of his five children didn't speak to him, and there were bars on the door of his mansion to prevent his children from being kidnapped because of his great wealth. He never joined the church, even though I had talked to him across the years, and being a rather young and naive pastor, I thought he was maybe interested in the church, but I think it was rather he was just lonely. Because according to worldly standards, he had everything, but he really had nothing. When he got sick, he asked me to do his funeral. And I remember that day because it was a cold and rainy day and only three people showed up to the funeral. Two of his five children, his wife was in a blackout, drunk, and the lawyer who was going to execute his estate. Chet had answered the question, what does God want of you in his own way? And then there was another person, and she never really her entire life had very much material wealth or income at all. Her husband had a very basic job and died many years before her, so she survived by Social Security and disability income and by renting out some rooms in her home to some boarders so she could get a little bit of rental income. But she was the type of person that was always making a meal for someone else or reaching out to people that she knew that were struggling in some way. And one Christmas, her children had given her a new coat, which she promptly turned around and gave to someone else that she felt needed it more. When she died, she left most of her estate 
to fund a Lutheran church in Tanzania and a church camp in California. Sally was my maternal grandmother. She did not have anything in the way of the world, but she answered the question, what does God want of us in her own way? And at her funeral at Messiah Lutheran Church in Harrisburg, it was packed because she had lived life asking this question, do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God. If you were to die tomorrow, what would your memorial service be like? And what would others say about you? May sound like a harsh question, but it's my job to ask the important questions. Those questions were answered thousands of years ago in a bloody butcher shop in Jerusalem, but they're just as applicable today because today we as American consumer Christians believe that if we go to church and the music is nice and the message makes us feel comfortable and we leave smiling, then that is all that God demands of us. But what God is really concerned about is the other six and a half days of your week. What does God want of you? Amen. We worship this morning with our morning offering. And as the offerings received, we share in a musical offering as well. We thank those of you who give your offerings and tithes through the plate, and also those of you who choose to give to your church electronically.
Before we share in our community meal, a reminder that when we ask the question, what does God want of us, that's not just a question for us to answer individually, but also as a church. You have a couple weeks left to fill out our 50th anniversary survey. It takes you about 15 minutes. Hopefully you have 15 minutes to make your church a priority in your life. We'd love to hear your feedback and we'll be sharing those results in November with the whole congregation. Please rise as we share in our time of communion. Our Lord Jesus Christ in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to them. And he said, this cup is now a new covenant because it is shed in my blood, given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink from this cup, do this to remember me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns again. Let us pray our family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You may be seated. We'll invite the communion assistants forward. While they're coming forward, we want to remind you we commune here by intinction. The ushers will guide you to the appropriate communion station, and then uh, you can receive the wafer of bread and dip it into the chalice of wine or hold it over the chalice of wine as you desire. If children are present and they've received communion instruction, we invite them to extend their hands. If their hands are at their sides, they will receive a blessing. God's gifts are ready for his people.
before we stand for the benediction, don't forget to uh, grab a cup of coffee or have some time at fellowship outside and also grab a 50th anniversary shirt. At this time, would you please rise as we share in our benediction. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with his favor and give us his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.